What's up, guys? This is Brave, and I'm back with another review of Ready to Love. This is Season 5, Episode 6. The episode is titled A Second Shot at Love. And let's get right into it, you guys, because I have a lot of opinions about this episode, even though it was still quite boring. So, as we already know, the guys have the power this week. And Tommy basically lets them know that he wants them to step out of their comfort zone and give someone who they may have looked over a date. Basically, give them a shot and see where it goes. And also, Tommy happened to mention that, you know, we are halfway through the process. I said, excuse me? Halfway through the process? Who likes who at this point? Because... I have no idea who is interested in who anymore besides Camille and Cornelius. And the reason why I'm saying that is that even though at the end of every episode, they go around the table and they say, oh, I'm feeling this person and that person. The thing about it is every week it changes. Literally every week, these people change up who they're feeling. So I have no idea who likes who. And this episode definitely proved it for me. So let's start off with the first date. And that would be Walter and Zadia. I did not see this coming. So he happened to mention that, you know, he still has Sabrina in his top. I don't understand how. I know that they, you know, Don't show us every date that happens, but how is Sabrina in your top and we have yet to see a date with y'all? Somebody please explain to me in the comments how that makes any sense. I like these phone conversations that these people are having got to be amazing. But anyways, so he's going out with Zadia. They're going to get Manny's and Petty's. She's already in the chair, which kind of made me question if he was late or not. Because I'm like, dude. How is she already halfway done? Because her nails are about to get painted. So what was you doing earlier? But whatever. So they have this conversation about, I'm sorry, not even a conversation. First, they were roasting each other, which I was like, okay, that's cute. Cute little banter. And then she ends up asking Walter, you know, what excites you about relationships and women? And his response was family. Y'all, that was not the answer to the question. I'm sorry. What? When a person asks you what excites you about being in a relationship, it should not be family unless you were going to go into the process of, yeah, because the next person that I date, I hope that we can start a family. But whatever. So they then go on to talk about how, you know, her family does family trips and all this stuff and how he wants to do those types of things. Um, Because as we know, Walter wants to have children, which is another reason why I'm giving him a side eye as to why he still is flirting or I guess talking to Sabrina because she doesn't want kids anymore. So why are you wasting your time over there, sir? I'm just throwing this out because I feel like a lot of people are going on dates and talking to people and wasting their time. So they then go on to talk about how you know, he's raised by four different women. Well, he had four women in his household who raised him. And Zadia was like, yeah, but, you know, some men, they have been raised by women and they still treat women bad. And that is absolutely a fact. I have no idea why some men are like that. But, yeah, there's definitely some out there that even though they were raised by women, and it's not even like these women are bad. Like, y'all know what I'm saying? Like, some men, even if they have, you know, moms who are not trying to baby him and coddle him, how some do, they still go out here and treat women bad. Like, it's crazy. But anyways, so Walter circles back to this story about him and his ex-wife and blah, 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 blah. Listen, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm tired of hearing about Walter's ex-wife because, again, that happened 20 years ago. What were your relationships like 10 years ago, Walter? What were your relationships like five years ago, Walter? Because there is no way you're going to tell me about something that happened 20 years ago and act like it just happened yesterday. I'm sorry. To me, that is a red flag. So anyways, he ends up, they asked him what nail polish color should she get on her toes. He was like magenta. I said magenta. That's how you know he an old man. Old men will suggest a color like magenta. So basically, she's going to go ahead and get white, like we all do. <laughs> and um, 
he tells her, you know, men don't choose women. Women choose men. Are you trying to choose me? And she's like, maybe, sort of, kind of. I'm just like, all right, girl, I guess. Because she's another one who I have no idea where her connections stand. Because at one point she was feeling Dante. And then she was feeling um, Naeem. And yet I have yet to see these people together. But let's go ahead and move on. All right, so now we have Sabrina. She is going out with Sean. They're at a Korean barbecue spot, right? Now, what is so interesting is that when she is talking to Sean, she happens to say something in Korean. And I said, whoa, 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 girl. Didn't you tell old boy that you don't know Korean at all, uh, Tyrone? Even though Tyrone is the one who you had a connection with. So you really let him embarrass himself on that first episode and see his little shoulda, coulda, wouldas? All right, girl. <laughs> so anyways, um, they're actually having a really good time. Um, they're very playful with each other. And I like them together. I will say that. I did like seeing Sean and Sabrina together. However, that was short-lived because... Sabrina, she talks about how she is not going to show up as a representative because, you know, that is what has always been shown to her and how she has a nine-year-old daughter and she's not about to have men in and out of her life, you know, because what type of example would that be for her daughter? I completely understand what she's saying. Um, And here's the thing. When they talk about having kids, honestly, this is the one season where I feel like a lot of them are talking about Do you want to have kids? You know, because at this point, a lot of the women, they already have kids and they're done. And Sabrina is one of them. So Sabrina does not want to have any more children. She's good. She has her daughter. Now, Sean, as we know, he wants to have kids. This is the second woman who has told him he she does not want to have children. So that kind of even brings me back to the whole Aisha thing, because Aisha, she mentioned that she doesn't want to have children, yet she is still playing in other people's face, knowing that they want kids. You know what? I'll talk about that in a second. So, anyways, um, he tells her that, you know, he wants to have children. He doesn't want to get in a situation where, you know, four or five months down the line or a year down the line... And he still wants children, but she doesn't want it. You know, then at that point, you have already put in so much time together. Um, But he still wants to date her. Why? Like, no offense to Sabrina, because I think she's a beautiful woman and all this stuff. But at that point, you guys are no longer compatible. Because she does not want children. Therefore, Sean, move on to the next person. Leave Sabrina where she's at. Let's go ahead and move on to the next date. All right, so this is the date, which was Phil and Aisha. Now, this is the first time I feel like we've actually seen Phil on a date. I'm not really counting that little workout thing that was going on with him and Dante and Shiloh and Carrie. Eh, whatever. So, we finally see him on a date or whatever, and they're talking about... Um, they're talking about food at first and how she loves to cook and all this stuff. And then things got really serious because he's like, oh, you know, I heard that you don't want children. Um, like, you know, is that really where you stand? And that kind of brings up a, a real serious question that I have for the show. At this point, everybody talks to each other, right? I don't understand why we've watched so many people waste dates on people who they know they're not matches with. For example, Aisha, she does not want children. Now, Sean going on a date with her, that makes sense because he did not know that she did not want children. However, I could have swore that Frank wanted children. What, didn't he? I feel like Frank wanted children. So, he's out here playing in Aisha's face. Uh, clearly Phil wants children <laughs> and he's out here playing in Aisha's face even though you already know that her answer is she doesn't want children but she actually ends up going into very deep detail as to why she doesn't want children it's because she doesn't carry kids well um that she has 
almost she almost lost both of her kids that she do that she does have as well as she's had a miscarriage um I actually feel really really bad for Aisha because that is something that we don't talk about enough is miscarriages and also when women have very hard um or just hard pregnancies period like the process of having a baby is like whoo it's a lot going on there because not only are you bringing a new life into this world you have to also make it through as well because think about how many women have died you know because they delivered their baby and the doctors weren't listening to them you know what i'm saying like that just brings that topic up and whoo that's not this video but we could definitely have a conversation about that um Aisha, you know, she breaks down, she's crying, and Phil, he goes over there, he comforts her, and I did enjoy seeing that, but it also made me feel like, all right, so now you guys are just friends, because I feel like I would not, if I was a man, if someone told me this, that it's very hard for them to have children, all this stuff, I'm not going to put that pressure on you knowing that I want children. You get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like Phil wants children. So, therefore, you and Aisha can be friends. But I think you need to move along to someone else. Because you shouldn't want to put that pressure on her. Because at the end of the day, if you do get into a serious relationship with her, there is still that chance that you might still want her children. And her children are not enough for you. Um, but let's go ahead and move along. Oh, also, one thing I wanted to mention, I f almost forgot. At the top of the uh, this date, Phil was in his confessional talking about how, you know, Shiloh is still at my top, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, yeah, and you haven't been on a real date with Shiloh either. All right, let's go ahead and move along. All right, so this next date was a hot mess because <laughs> you have Camille going out with Naeem, right? I'm sorry, but I fell out when she talked about how he was wearing his little uh, Miz dashiki. I fell out <laughs> because that's definitely how Naeem dresses. And it works for him, but I just didn't expect her to say that. So this date, it just was not a real date. Like at this point, we already know that Camille is not interested in none of these guys. And I know that a lot of us, we have said that Camille has put all her eggs in the Cornelius basket and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I just don't think that she liked any of the other guys. I really feel like she came on the show and was like, all right, I'm going to see what guy I like. She saw Cornelius. They had a good conversation and their values actually align so i understand why she stuck without with him because honestly why would she go on a date with some of these other guys considering she wants to wait till marriage because if she was to go out with some of these other guys she'll be looking stupid like we mean and we're going to get to that date that she had with frank that was a waste of time because when you really think about it Walter, he wants kids. He's a very sexual person. We already know that from the last date that they went on. You have Dante. I'm pretty sure he ain't waiting on nothing. Frank ain't waiting on nothing. Um, Phil ain't waiting on nothing. Like, none of these guys are planning on waiting to have sex besides Cornelius. So, it kind of makes sense to me why Camille... I don't want to say, I guess you could say latched on to Cornelius and didn't waste her time dating around with these other men whose values did not align with hers. And as crazy as I know that Camille is, I'm just saying like, it makes sense to me. So on this date with um, Naeem or whatever, first they were talking about nothing that was important. And then, you know, they talked about, oh, do you want kids? All this stuff. And Naeem is like, yeah, but I'm more so focused on the woman first. And I completely understand that. But I feel like you still need to know if you want to have children or not. Because you can have a great relationship with a woman and she wants kids and you don't. And then that becomes a whole thing. So I completely understand the question. And then for her to come around and say, well, I have a seven-year-old child. What would be your position or role in his life. 
Um, I do understand that question as well, because if a person has children, you do have to think of those types of questions. So he's like, well, you know, basically he didn't want to be seen as, oh, I'm trying to be his dad, but also I want your child to respect me as, you know, an adult with some type of authority. And I'm like, okay, I totally get that. Um, at one point he fed her like some oysters or whatever. And, you know, she opened up her mouth really wide and he's like, oh my gosh, it, it wasn't that big or something like that. Or maybe I can't remember what the joke was. He's like, that's what she said. And I, I can't lie. I've definitely giggled a few times at a few of the, that's what she said jokes, but I probably wouldn't do that on a first date with somebody. Just throwing it out there because everyone is not comfortable with those types of jokes. Um, I did giggle when <laughs> the producers was like, oh, oysters are an aphrodisiac. And she's like, well, he wasn't getting none. So why are you even throwing that out there? <laughs> oh, gosh. Camille, Camille, Camille. Um, and then out of nowhere, I have no idea if this is how the conversation actually went or if. They had some other things that were said that was cut out because it seemed like it jumped straight to her asking him about finances and how much money he makes and if he makes six figures and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, at that point, the date was over because he doesn't want anyone questioning him about his finances. Um, I kind of feel like because she asked Cornelius and he was OK with that question, she was going to ask every guy who attempted to ask her out on a date um about their finances like honestly I feel like Camille already knew what this was going into this date she's like okay I'm about to go get some free food for dinner tonight and that's what that's going to be because I have no interest in this man I'm only interested in Cornelius (laughs) and that is exactly what happened I kind of feel like I wish that Naeem would have taken somebody else out like at this point like this is another thing I feel like all these people talk to each other at this point. So I don't understand why they're taking out people on dates who they know for sure do not align with what they want in a relationship. Because I'm pretty sure at this point, everybody knows that, first of all, Camille's only interested in Cornelius. But secondly, that she's um, she's basically, uh, what's that word? What am I looking for? Uh not having sex until she's married. I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, she's basically not having sex until she's married. That doesn't align with you. You need to go ahead and move on to somebody else. Why couldn't I even take out the new girl? That would have been fine to me. Let's stop wasting time with Camille. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the next date. All right. So, now we see a double date. It, it is Dante, Frank, Sabrina, and Mumin, right? So, at first... You have Dante and Mumin kind of all on each other. And then it was Sabrina and Frank or whatever. I was like, okay, this is interesting. Did I see these four people ever looking at each other? (laughs) I just didn't see it. So they're having their fun or whatever, playing a miniature golf or whatever. And at one point, I think Mumin thought that she was going to spend time with Dante the whole time. But nope. Sabrina's like, oh, let me go ahead and take him off your hands, girl. Let's go get a drink. (laughs) So she takes Dante with her, and that leaves me with Frank. So first, let's talk about Sabrina and Dante. Now, this is actually a match that I did not expect, but I can actually see it working. And here's why I can see this working. Um, Sabrina already has one child. She talked about how her child's father was MIA and how she's had to be a single mother. Now you have Dante. He has three different baby mamas, three different kids, but he swears that they all get along and it's all good or whatever. But the reason why I'm saying that I feel like they could work out together is because if he already has three kids at this point, there's a chance that he doesn't want to have any more children. And I feel like he may be the only guy there that is not interested in having children. And for that reason, I don't mind them dating. Go ahead, have at it. Because to me, that makes more sense than for, you know, for them to try to pursue people who want to have children. Um, Now, let's go ahead and jump on over to Frank and Mumin. 
First of all, they tried to reenact the Lady and the Tramp thing with, I think, a donut hole or something. I don't know what they were eating, but I was like, absolutely not. Because, again, Frank's beard looks like it's growing out of the side of his mouth. Ew. Um, and they're having this conversation about her and her abstinence from sex, right? And she's like, yeah, you know, I really want to, you know, save myself for marriage, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't know if Mumin is a virgin or not. I couldn't really tell, but either way, she's not having sex. I said, oh, okay. So then Frank talks about how he's hypersexual. And I'm like, so this relationship is not going anywhere. This was another what? Wasted date. At this point, everybody should already know that Mumin, she's not having sex with anyone until she's married. Let's stop wasting our time, guys. So, um, but at the end of the date, though, both of them walked away like as if this was like a great date. And was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I see something with Frank. I'm like, you see what? That he's going to try to sleep with you? And you're going to have to keep telling him no? What are you saying, Mumin? And that's when I realized that I don't know if Mumin is serious about that. Because you let Corey put his meat all on your back and you were absolutely fine with that. Now you're talking to a guy who says that he's hypersexual. And you're acting like everything's all good, even though you try to save yourself for marriage. How does that make sense, Mumin? Please make it make sense. But then I realized, you know what? She's grasping for straws because she doesn't really have any connections. But at the end of the day, honestly, most of these people on this season do not have any connections. And as much as we talk bad about Cornelius and Crazy Camille... They're the only one who seem they're the only ones who seem to be making an actual connection. But let's go ahead and move along because we actually see Tazia go on a date and it could actually be a potential for her because she went on a date with Sean. So, you know, she gets there, has on her cute little two-piece outfit, and in her confessional, she talks about how, you know, there's new blood here, so let the games begin. Because none of the guys were really given to see it any play. Let's be honest. They automatically friend zoned her, half of them. And then the other half, they felt like she talked too much about her business. But I feel like they also did not do a good job on guiding the conversation. But whatever. On this date with Sean, first they're talking about the type of drinks that they have or whatever. And then they go in to talk about how... You know, they both want to have children. They both were raised in a uh, Christian uh, church. I think it was Baptist, I believe. Um, a Baptist church and how, you know, that's where their roots are. And honestly, it was a really good conversation. And I was like, hmm, it's funny that we see to see it having a conversation with Sean. And it's not all about work. It's not all about, you know, her being in the corporate world and all that stuff. And it further let me know, yes, yeah, some of these men did not know how to carry a conversation with her, clearly. Because Sean got her to open it up, and she was not talking about work at all. Now, I will say that I know last week she had mentioned, um, what was that guy saying? Phil was on her radar because she put a few pieces of fruit on his plate. Um, I wonder if he's still in the ranks or if they're having conversations on the phone. Just because, you know, he hasn't mentioned to see it at all. So I'm just wondering if Phil is still around, you know, possibly being a guy for it to see it. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. But let's go ahead and move along. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this date, which was Courtney and Cornelius. First of all, I will say that one thing that I noticed about Courtney in this scene is that I don't think Courtney really combs her hair because I feel like her hair it doesn't look I don't know it just doesn't look how most girls with the big curly hair how their hair looks like I feel like she just like went to bed woke up and kind of patted out the back and was like all right this is the this is the look for the day but that's just something that I noticed but anyways so 
I have no idea what they were supposed to be doing on this date because they were just sitting there and she just kept rubbing on his leg because as we already know, she is moving forward with all this sexual energy, even though she absolutely knows that he is trying to abstain from having sex. So I'm like, girl, how do you think that's going to work? Because clearly it looks like you don't know what boundaries are, especially considering he's already told you where he stands in this situation. So that right there was a red flag for him. Then at one point she talks about how, you know, she's a boss and is he comfortable with dating a boss? And I'm like, you're a boss in what aspect, girl? You're not Beyonce. You're not Kim Kardashian. What are you bossing? Are you like the manager at a store? Like, you're a boss for what? Whatever, girl. So, I'm sorry. At this point, I'm kind of over a Courtney because I feel like she's just laying on super thick on Cornelius. But I'm just like, I don't even think Cornelius is your guy. Because when I think back on that date that they went on where it was uh, Walter and Camille there. Walter is technically more her speed. Walter is hypersexual, just like she is. And a lot of the things that they were saying at that table was very similar. I'm like, why didn't you try to go after Walter or, I don't know, any of the other guys? Oh, wait, my bad, you had Corey. So that kind of makes me think about how, as again, as much as we, the viewers, hated Corey... Corey possibly would have been the match for Courtney because clearly his energy matched hers. But anyways, you could clearly see that Cornelius was uncomfortable on this date. And I knew right then and there, I said, oh, girl, you may be going home. But let's go ahead and talk about what happens in the men's lounge. So the first guy that Tommy talks to is Walter. He's like, okay, what happened on your date? And Walter is like, oh, you know, Zadia, she's real cool. And, you know, she's moving up on the list. Now, Tommy asks him, oh, but what about Sabrina? I said, what about her? Because at the end of the day, we have yet to see Walter put any effort into Sabrina. We've yet to see it. Now, I don't know why the producers may be holding back that footage, but I don't see no connection if we ain't ever seen y'all in a date, in a dating setting. Just saying. All right, so next person that's talking, we have Phil. He talks about his day with Aisha and how, you know, it went really, really well. And Tommy asks him, all right, so does that put her up on your list? He's like, yeah, she up there, but Shiloh is still number one for him. All right, can we please see some effort with you and Shiloh? Because I've yet to see Phil do anything. Because even in that conversation that he had with Aisha, I have learned nothing about Phil. Actually, when I think about it, I really don't know nothing about none of these people. But for sure, the men, I really don't know nothing about them. And Phil, he has been getting by because... Woo, I gotta forget he exists half the time. But anyways, we jump on over to Sean. He talks about Tasia, talk about she has that whole Jill Scott thing going. I don't know where he was going with that. Is it because she's a curvier woman? Like, what about her is Jill Scott? Because I don't see it. But anyways, he says that their date went great. He also brings up Sabrina and how that date was good as well. So when Tommy asks him, like, oh, so do you see a connection there? He's like, well, you know, I still want kids. And that is another thing where I'm just like, again, at this point, all the rest of the fellas should know who wants kids, who doesn't want kids, who wants to have sex, who uh, who does not want to have sex. So let's not waste any more time considering we are halfway through the process dating people who don't want to do the same things that, you're, that you want to do. Just saying. But let's go ahead and move on. Because the last person that he asked, I think, was Dante. And he talks about his date with Sabrina. Sabrina is now on his radar. But, of course, when Tommy asks, all right, who's the person who's, like, basically your number one right now? He says Shiloh. Shiloh is his girl. But, of course, he still has a little bit of interest in Zadia as well. So, then we get Frank talking about his date with Mumin, right? And he basically made it sound like everything was great. Everything went good. There's a chance for them. How? 
How is there a chance if you're hypersexual, which are the words that you said, and she doesn't want to have sex? How is that going to work? I don't. Make it make sense, y'all. Make it make sense. So now we talk about who the guys are not feeling. Of course, Cornelius talks about Courtney and how baby girl came on too strong. You know, she basically didn't value the same things that he valued. And well, he ain't feeling her like that no more. All right. So Frank, he also agrees that he ain't feeling Courtney since the first time that they met. He felt like she was not the one for him. So then we ask, um, I think it was Walter who he wasn't feeling. And he said, Aisha. Because basically they haven't spent any time together. And then next you have Dante saying that he wasn't feeling to see it because he got friend vibes from her. You have Phil saying that he wasn't feeling um, Sabrina because they never got a chance to talk. And in that moment, it kind of just made me realize that like, it's one thing for you to say, oh, I haven't spent time with so-and-so. But I also think that these guys need to be honest with themselves and be like, oh, this is who I've been out on a date with and we don't exactly align. Therefore, I need to stop pursuing that because, of course, Walter, he said Aisha and um, what was the other person he said? Aisha and Courtney, right? But I'm like, you could have easily said you know what? I actually do want kids, so maybe I need to stop pursuing Sabrina. And he could have even said Mumin because she doesn't want to have sex and clearly he does. You get what I'm saying, y'all? Like, it's weird to me that they are quick to throw out people who didn't give them no play. But the people who actually they pursued, and even though we already know it won't work with them, they will never mention them in the whole elimination process. So that's why I actually do have respect for Cornelius, who's like, you know what? Courtney was an option for me, but because our backgrounds and and what I want to do and and be in my life, it doesn't align with her, there's no space for her to, you know, be trying to date me. I completely understand that. The rest of these guys, questionable. Oh, I almost forgot. You had uh, Sean mention that he wasn't feeling Camille. And also, um, Naeem, he wasn't feeling Camille either. So, you know, I actually respect Naeem saying, you know what, I'm not feeling Camille. Because at least he actually went on a date with her and made the effort. Y'all see what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing for you to go out with the person and then you realize, you know what, we're not a match. But I hate when they ask the people or whichever, the women or the guys, oh, who are you not feeling? Oh, so-and-so, because basically they didn't give me no play and we ain't been out. They showed no interest in me, so clearly they need to go ahead and go home. It's like, yeah, but maybe they were interested in somebody else. But whatever. So we already know at this point, a lot of the guys are not feeling Camille because she has put all her eggs in um Cornelius's basket and also she's very um what's the word I want to say rude (laughs) she's very rude to them because she's solely focused on Cornelius she doesn't even treat these men with any type of respect she's just very short with them and it's rude period so we finally get to who is going home. We have Dante meeting up with Camille and Walter meeting up with Courtney. Now, one thing that stood out to me about this elimination round is the fact that these guys really treated this like a damn date. I'm like, why are y'all actually sitting there eating the food? Why are you having a conversation about the weather and what the hell they did today? You should have just started off like, listen. So me and the guys talked. (laughs) Baby girl, you're going home. It should have been real simple. But no. So first off, you have Camille. She already strolled in. I feel like she already knew what this was. Because she probably has not had any conversations with Dante. She already don't like this man. She already knew what was up. So you know what actually let me talk about this whole walter and courtney thing so at one point he's like sitting there he's like oh we haven't really got a chance to talk so tell me about yourself and i said this is the time where you want to say tell me about yourself were you about to send her home really walter 
So Courtney is like, okay, that's a generic question. But then she goes on to talk about herself or whatever. And, you know, Walter basically is like, okay, so finally he gets to it. And, you know, the, me and the guys talked about how, you know, you not really here, you know, and make making connections. And she brings up how, you know, they went on that double date. And he's like, yeah, but both of y'all were interested in Cornelius. So what was I even there for? And I said that from the beginning. Like, Walter was literally there just to be a body to be there. <laughs> because... Neither one of the women was interested in him, even though I still feel like Courtney should have made, you know, she should have definitely tried to put the ball in Walter's court because they have a lot of things more so in common, or at least they have a lot of similarities to me. But at the end of that conversation, Walter lets her know that, you know what, you're not ready to love. But let's go ahead and jump on over to Camille, because, again, Camille could already sense what was going on. I don't know why Dante tried to keep going with the small talk. It was a waste of time. So he finally gets to the point of, you know, him and the guys were were talking. No, no, no. Actually, he didn't even do that. He said, how does it feel to date 10 guys or something like that? Or how's it been going dating 10 guys? And she's like, first of all, I haven't been dating 10 guys. I said, yep, that's pretty true because she is only dating Cornelius. She's not worried about anybody else. So um, that's what Dante was like. Okay, well, me and the guys were talking and some of the guys feel like, you know, you only have eyes for Cornelius, basically. You don't really see it for the rest of us. And she was actually very honest in this moment, and I kind of respect it. First off, she talks about how she knows what she wants and how she made the connections that she felt that she desired. And secondly, she talks about how she doesn't want to waste anybody's time. And if that means that people are friend zone, then they are friend zone. And what I mean by understand where she's coming from in that, I feel like she came on this show with a checklist. Because she's like, this is where I'm at right now. I'm not having sex till marriage. I need someone who's Christian. I need someone who's this, that, blah, 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 right? And I feel like Cornelius checked off more of the things on her list. And she said, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and ride out with that. And honestly, I don't even see a problem with that. Even as crazy and cuckoo and overbearing as she is, I don't see a problem with that considering this show is called Ready to Love, not date around with everybody just in case. Because this is the season of date around just in case. There may be a spark there. You never know. So Dante ends up telling Camille that she is not ready to go home. And in her confessional, she says, you know, yeah, I'm not feeling the rest of these guys, but that does not mean that I deserve to go home because I'm only interested in one person. And you know what? To me, that is actually a very valid point because just because I'm not showing interest in four of y'all and I feel like I made a connection with one person, I do feel like that person should stay. Because at the end of the day, like I said, the whole point of the show is ready to love. And if this person is locked in a connection, then they should not go home. Like, honestly, Camille and Cornelius are the only two that have locked in their connection. Everybody else, it keeps changing. So, I understand why Cornelius and Camille are still around. But you know what, guys? That was the episode. Um, one thing I do want to talk about real quick is I did see the preview at the end for the next episode. And I will say this should be very interesting because there are people who I guess they're meeting the friends next week. And I just feel like this is way too early considering none of these people have really solidified who they are actually interested in. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you in the next one. Bye, guys.